with Creating with Tammy. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to work on resizing a file. Perhaps you've bought a file off of a, a third-party website. Um, you can import an SVG or you can import a PDF, but you're going to have to actually do the design. And you can import a DXF file. You brought it into X to a creative space and it looks like a bunch of green boxes with some orange design behind it and you don't know what to do with it at this point. So we're going to cover that. I have a kind of easy file today. I'm going to actually show you a couple of files and then we'll work on a, a more difficult project on subsequent videos. So let's go ahead and get to work today. Now we are in X to a creative space. Um, let's go ahead and connect to our machine. I am connected. You can see Xtool M1. Uh, if you ever want to um, see what settings your machine is or what laser module you have, if you don't know, that's all here in the basic information. Let's go ahead and refresh it so we can get a picture of the uh, laser bed. And I have a piece of basswood in here. It's marked as three millimeter. When I use my calipers, it's actually 2.8 millimeters and it's 12 by 12. Now, when you wanna import a file off of a third party website um, that you've purchased or somehow obtained free, you always wanna bring it in as an image. The only file you can actually open as a project is a Xtool Creative Space file that has an extension of XCS. You can import SVG files or DXF files. There might be more, but I haven't run into them. Um, remember, I'm new at this. I'm just sharing what I'm learning along the way. If you have a better way or some suggestion, I would love to hear from you and we can learn from each other. Okay, the first question that's going to come up is, do you want to resize this? And if you want to let the machine resize it and uh, work from with it after that, you can do that. But if you don't, then just go ahead and say no. We can always manually resize it. Um, and don't hit remember my choice um, because it won't ask you this each time. Now, I got these files off of a, uh, 3axis, A-X-I-S dot C-O. Um, there's a lot of cool uh, designs over there that you can get. Just be careful to only download the actual file. They have a lot of advertisements that use the download term um, to try to get you to download different applications. Okay, so let's go ahead and zoom out. Down here in the bottom left corner, we can zoom out to see exactly what we have here and what size we're dealing with. This is a pretty big file. And when you first bring files in and uh, we have it uh, selected as laser flat here, um, it's gonna come in looking like this. And what, what is this? You're gonna say, what's all that green? Well, the green is just outlining each of the elements in this design. It doesn't, it's not going to cut those or anything like that. It's just outlining them. And the orange, let's go ahead and click off of this to get rid of those green boxes. And the orange means that it's going to actually score. That is the default. It brings everything in as a score. Even if the designer indicated this should, the box outside should cut or the inside should cut, it's only going to score here unless you uh, modify that and set it to uh, cut each individual uh, area. Now this, okay, so what I want to show you about this design is that it is all a puzzle piece design is what I call it. So all of these are like puzzle pieces. So as long as you resize the whole file together, it's going to fit just fine. You don't have to make any adjustments to these puzzle pieces. You can just go ahead and highlight the whole design. If you don't highlight the whole design, you could skew the uh, sizing and it wouldn't, you couldn't put it together, okay? And the other thing you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your uh, dimensions are locked up here. There's little lock, you click it, it opens or closes. If it's open and you went to move this and you just tweaked it a little bit, you could have a problem. Once it's locked, you won't have a problem. Okay, let's go ahead and grab the corner and I'm gonna make this a smaller box. And then I could move these elements around just by using my left mouse button, clicking and dragging to get the whole element, and then I can move it. If you see you left an element behind, just go hit your undo and do it again. Undo is your best friend. <laughs> 
Okay, so we could we could resize this and put this around. And what I would do here, I would score the inside of this and I would cut the outside of it. So how would I do that? I would go ahead and grab all of this and I'm gonna hit it to score. I like to do about 87. If you can't get the right number with your uh, mouse, you can just type it in. And about 78 and I like two passes. <laughs> And then this will also score the outside, but I don't want to do that, but I find it's easier to select that last, click just that outside element. I would hit cut. My favorite for 2.8 thickness, which is what this is, I need to put that in. Um, you can use auto measure too, but I have had more success doing user defined because I measure my board, okay? Hit score, I'm sorry, hit cut. <laughs> 100, five, and one pass will do, okay? So the inside now is orange, which means score. The outside is the blue-purple color. I think it's more purple than blue. Um, so that means it's going to cut. And that's all I have to do for that piece. And then we would go through and do this for the other pieces. We would just cut these two and do the same thing for the others. So that's all we would have to do to prepare this file to use. Okay, let's go on to our next file. I'm going to just close this, not save it. Now, this is a very basic file, okay? I can't open it up here again because it's not a X tool file. So I need to import it. And I can import as many images as I want. I think I said that before, but just in case, I'm not gonna scale it. Oh, let's scale it. Just to show you, you can still modify it if you do that, okay? So it just made it a little bit smaller than it was originally. Um, and let me bring it in one more time so you can see the difference. And I'm going to say no on this one. And then I'm going to pull that one over. Okay. And see, that's the original size of it. So it just brought it down so it would all fit on uh, one uh, bed or it would all fit on the bed, I should say. Okay. So let me go ahead and get rid of these pieces. I don't need them. I'll just delete those and we're back to this. Now, first thing you're going to say about this is, hey, whoa, Tam, this is a box and there are only two pieces and you would be right. So we're going to have to duplicate these. So I'm going to uh, select these two again by holding down my left mouse button, pulling my mouse over to the other corner. I'm going to do a copy by right click or you can do control C and control V is your paste is your keyboard shortcut, and there we go. Now I could decide to either cut out these this tree or uh, I could score it. So it's just my decision. We could even probably engrave it, um, but we'll get into that later. Okay, so let's talk about what we have to do to resize this, okay? So these tabs here, again, are puzzle pieces, so we don't have to worry about resizing those as long as we resize all of the elements together. But these slats or slots, I think is the more correct term, um, they are going to be a problem if we don't resize these. So let's click on that and let's look up here and see what size it is. Well, we're lucky because it just happens to be 2.8, but I actually want to make this box a little bit smaller than it is here. Let's go ahead and refresh our uh, bed over here so we can see our wood. As you see, this is gonna hang over and it's gonna be kind of a big board. If I wanna know how big it is, I can always click the one panel. If you think in millimeters, that's great. If you're like me and you don't, you could come up here, check settings, inches, and it would be seven inches. And I don't want it that big. So I'm gonna resize it. Don't let me forget to go back to millimeters before we cut. Very important, I've done that many times and you end up with a very weird cut if you don't do that. So I'm gonna select all of these elements. So I resize them together and make sure that my lock is on and my lock is on. And then I can come back here and see. That looks a little small, quite honestly. Let's make this about that big. Okay, so let me select one of these and see how tall that is. That's like 5.6 inches, so I'm fine with that. So I'm going to go ahead and leave them that size. I'm going to go to settings, switch to millimeters before I forget. Now, if I went to inches, you would notice over here, let me 
close this off real quick. Um, where if I did 2.8, because I think it's millimeters, then it's going to create a problem when I go to cut. So it's really important that you have the settings correct. Okay, it's millimeters. I'm good to go. And now I have to put that again, and it's 2.8. Okay. So let's go ahead and decide what we're going to do with each of these um, items. So we're going to, I'm going to go ahead and cut out everything because I think it'll look cool. I'm going to put a, a little electric light inside. I don't recommend you put a flame inside this when you cut it out of wood, um, but we could definitely put a little uh, battery operated votive in here. Okay, so let's go ahead and cut. We have a raised uh, triangular prism, which is going to change the orientation of these pieces. It gives you a little bit less room on your board for some reason. And we're going to cut, and we're going to do 100, 5, and 1. This is the default on the uh, user or on the material uh defaults here for three millimeter basswood, but I actually find it really does uh, work perfectly, okay? So let me highlight these all again because I lost my highlight clicking over there. Cut 105 and we're gonna do one pass, okay? I'm gonna move this one piece underneath here. Let me pull this over. I have to highlight that all again. Make sure you select all your pieces if you don't, Undo, just undo, and I'm going to turn this sideways. Now, if for some reason I put this outside of my work area by mistake, when I go to process, I'm going to get this element. The element is placed outside of the processing area. You also will get that error if you, sorry, let me just get the elements I need here. Okay, if I tilted this and had the original frame, see this frame outside of there? If that's hanging over too, I will get the same error where maybe the actual piece would fit, but if the frame doesn't, it's gonna give me that same element as placed. And this trips people up a lot, um, Just so just beware. Okay, I'm gonna undo that just because it's easier than trying to highlight just the pieces I want. And then I'm going to come over here. OK, so we are all good. Let me bring this piece back up. And I just need to move these all over just a tad. I'm going to move them together, save some time. I just find I don't like to be right on the edge of the wood. I have more issues with it. If you're one of those people that wants to use every inch of wood, then you can try to fit this all in, but I'd rather just get to, to cutting myself. <laughs> I'm very impatient. Okay. Okay, now most importantly, what's gonna cause us a problem on this cut? We have not resized these slots or slats um, to the right size for our wood because the actual edge of the wood is going to go in these slots. So we have to make sure that they're uh, 2.8, which is the size of this wood. So I'm going to highlight one of these. I want to unlock the dimensions. And why do I want to do that on this? Because if I modify the height, I don't want to modify the width or this piece down here is not going to fit into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and unlock it. And then I'm just going to type 2.8 in the box. I don't recommend you try to do it manually. And then I'm going to highlight that again. And I'm going to lock it because I want the dimensions to stay in proportion. Next one, unlock 2.8. And we're good to go. Now, if these are in a line like this, you can usually do them together. But just for safety, until you get more versed in it, I say do one at a time. Now, this is a very easy project. You're going to get projects that are much more complicated. I'll try to work up to those in subsequent videos. Now, if I did forget to unlock one of these, I know by these other ones what that uh, width is, which is 11.9. So I can always come back and check and make sure. Oops, I left this one unlocked. Let's go ahead and lock it up. Okay, and let's do this last one. Unlock it, 2.8. Oh, 
lock it up again. I always forget to lock it. Oops, now this one is opposite. So the width needs to be 2.8 and the height is 11.9 just because of the orientation. So that's why I'm saying if these are in a perfect line, you can do them. But if you have ones that are different orientations, it doesn't work to change them all together. Okay. Oops, I didn't lock it again. Okay, let's just check them all one more time. Save a piece of wood if I'm wrong. 2.8, 11.9, 2.8, And that's how you resize a file in a very basic form. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm not too worried about the framing on this because I have tons of space around this board. Um, but if you are, always do framing. It just takes and uh, puts the laser beam um, around the outside of your project to show you where it's going to cut. And it's just a safety until you get more comfortable with where things are going to cut. So we're going to go ahead and hit process and we're going to make this cute little box. We're going to come up here and hit start. If you want to frame it, you just come down here and frame it first. Okay, now we're going to go over and
While that is cutting, we're going to go ahead and come back over here and minimize this. And we're going to be sure to save our file. So we just want to do a file, save as, and then you can come back and use this again. Now, a little side note. At this point, if you want to get to work on something else, you can go ahead and click this plus sign for a second canvas, and you can import any other images you want to start working on. You cannot open another uh, XCS file. In order to do that, you would actually have to select new. If I want to go open a project right now, it's going to ask me if I want to save this. I can say yes or no since we just saved it. And I can start a new project um, while this is running. Once you send your file to the machine, it is in the machine. You don't even have to keep your computer connected to it anymore. It's going to finish that cut. But I just always want to save exactly the format that I have in case I would have to open it back up and maybe just cut one piece that didn't correct, cut correctly or there was some issue. Um, but you can go ahead and work on a different project while that's cutting and you're keeping an eye on it. Let's go ahead and go back to our processing so we can watch it. Our cut is all complete. Okay, so we are all done. As you see, if I refresh it, we can see the finished product on the bed. And again, if you haven't saved it at this point, you want to be sure to go ahead and save your project. I will put this together and be back to show you the end result. I had so much fun doing it with you guys. This is the finished project. I used Americana gel stain um, to stain this. I find it's a lot less mess, easier to clean up, um, and it doesn't have the smell that some of the other stains have. So I'm really happy with the way it turned out. Um, and I hope you guys got to actually do the project as well. If you didn't get the file, I do have it down in the comments so you can get it because it is a free file that I got off of 3axis.co. Okay, we'll do some more difficult projects in the day to come. Thank you again for joining me. Again, don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button and be sure to turn on the bell so you will be notified when I do new videos. Have a great day.